a lot of them. We're going to have special guests. Uh, we're going to have some fun. So that's New Year's Eve at 7 o'clock here at ABC. So, and you can bring visitors if you want, but that'll be our celebration, celebrating the New Year, uh, New Year's Eve going into the New Year. Amen? Amen? All right. So that's the Praise Team Project, too. Y'all been waiting on it. So we're just going to do it live, and, and it's, it's, we should have a lot of fun. Amen? All right. Well, let's do this. Look at somebody and say, in time preparation. In time preparation. Ask your neighbor, are you, are you ready for the end times? The end times. Are, you are you ready to see Jesus? Jesus? Are you really ready to see Jesus? What would Jesus do if he walked up and you saw him? Would, would he take you with him? Or would he leave you there and tell you that you're not ready? You need to ask yourself that. Amen? Because you're not going to have that much time when it happens. Amen? AdamandBeliever.com forward slash end time preparation dot P D F brings us to this particular parable. This parable is sandwiched in between other parables that speak of the readiness or being ready or being prepared to see Jesus when he returns and, and it likens the uh, kingdom of heaven to these things so we want to make sure we get a good understanding of these parables and not overdo it a lot of times people overdo their exegesis of parables and they read into them way too much you know some folks can get so heavy in their reading that the lord pull out a concordance and be like now wait a minute <laughs> they get me that. Oh, they can go down deep, all in that. I'm not that kind of preacher, you know. I mean, if God gives me revelation, or if I hear a profound speaker, I'll repeat. But I'm not into just impressing people with my knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. There's nothing wrong with knowing it. I don't know a lot of it. But uh, I'm not, that's not the way I preach. I want everyone to get a good understanding because I believe the Bible is written that way. That we all get a good understanding and we don't have to pull out nothing else to try to figure out what the preacher's talking about. Amen? Because you should be able to hear the message and re-preach the message to someone else. Amen? So we need to keep that, you know, that's the way ABC has been and it's going to stay that way because that's just the way I relay the gospel messages. So it's going to be like that. All the elders preach the same way here. It's the same thing. We just want you to get it. We're not trying to impress you. So you'll go home. Whoa, Doc. Did you hear what Elder Trent said? Oh, my goodness. He dug deep down in the... We're not into that. We just want you to get it. Amen. As a church, J. Brian breaks the... Man, if you ever hear him and the youth, they, they all... under Y'all youth, y'all understand what he's saying, right? Oh, gosh. We've got to work on that. Amen. Maybe we don't need to have a party. What... I'm just playing. <laughs> they look at me like, now wait a minute. You taking your authority. <laughs> but yeah, but y'all, they understand it. And we believe that it is vital, just vital for our young people to get that foundation as they get older. Amen. So that when they come in here, after they've gotten that foundation, they have a foundation in their age bracket or age group in their development. And then when they become adults, they can... You know, we can pick right up with it with what we're talking about in here. Amen. Y'all yeah. don't believe that? Y'all don't believe the youth group is important? No. no. Jay and Pazay, they got one of the most important jobs in the whole church dealing with folks, kids. Amen. So, so we want to make sure we get a good understanding in everything. So let's go into this Matthew 25 and 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were what? Wise. And five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight... What there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, 
Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be enough for us and you. We don't, have, we don't have enough for you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy some for yourself. You should have done that in the first place. So while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready, look at somebody and say ready. ready. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And what happened? The door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Where, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Hey, man, that's deep, boy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Wow. So there's some things we can learn from this. I'm just going to briefly before I go into the message. It's a very short message. A lot of people just overdo this Pat, this uh, parable and you know why the, were there ten virgins and they was had nothing to do with the virgins really had nothing to do with anything other than just folks not ready okay amen so you know five were wise five were foolish they were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps so they all had lamps and they all started out with all but that don't mean what folks said, men, they all in your anointing went out. And I, <laughs> folks got all kinds of, I'm telling you, man, I was just thinking back to some old sermons I've heard. And I mean, folks can make this passage so long. Cause that's, that's definitely not in there. But the bottom line is, look at somebody and say, be prepared. be prepared. And oh, they slept and they slumbered. Ain't nothing wrong with sleeping and slumbering. And what people don't realize is, you know, back in the Eastern culture, when it comes to marriage, it was totally different than it is now. Folk here married three, four times, five times, you know. Marriage gets, you know, degraded more and more to the point to where the bride have to wear plaid. <laughs> and so it just, <laughs> you know, I tried white, it didn't work. I tried black, it didn't work. And I tried red, so let me just put on a... <laughs> it just wasn't as sacred. <laughs> as it is in the east this was a sacred moment because they thought of marriage as being forever once you consummate once you consummate you were you know indebted to that person with your life forever y'all belong together forever so they believed in all of that happening in the same night they believed it should be a big deal so what would happen is the father of the groom would just decide when it was time. So this, sometimes the marriage would last a week. All these different festivals, celebrations, and all of this stuff, and everybody waiting on the call of the, the bridegroom's father. Bridegroom's father would just wake up one day, one night, be close to midnight, and he would just wake up and say, it's time. His son would get up, they would make the cry, and then everyone would light their lanterns and get up, and they would have a processional through the streets. Well, it was dark, so you had to have your lantern. They would make the processional through the streets from the walk from the bridegroom's home to the bride's home. And they would all walk and march, and then they would go inside, and they would close the door. Yeah. Right? Now, you know, even the Western weddings like we have, if you weren't invited, you can't come. Yeah. Hey, man, somebody needs to clap. You don't crash a wedding. What you doing here? Who are you? No, that's an intimate thing. Like we don't crash weddings. Like if you, it's invitation only, right? And so when the door was closed, they assumed everyone that was invited was in there because they did what they were supposed to do to be there. They walk with the lanterns, walk with the light. Once you, when you were seen with the lantern, that means you were a part of the wedding party. Okay. So we got to realize all of these things in this story because the story don't make sense to us with our old raggedy weddings and shotgun. What we doing here? <laughs> we ain't going to spend a lot of money because I might have to do this again. And just, you know, folk crazy here. So, but here it was taken in the consummation. I mean, once, you know, she loses her virginity, I mean, she, that's it. So you can't be late. You can't come late. Because once it's done, you missed it, and we can't do it again. Yeah. Right? Can't do it again. You missed it. You missed it. 
And so this, this particular story, it just really, really teaches us a lesson on how to be prepared and ready. This parable is an analogy of the coming of Christ. Though many use it for other scenarios, the proper exegesis of this parable is to warn us all to what? Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Five of the ten were not ready. Matthew 24 and 44. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye what? Just when you got comfortable and believe, ah, the Lord's going to delay his coming a little longer. He said, the son of man is going to come. The ten virgins were bridesmaid in the wet bridesmaid. Likely, they were likely bridesmaids in the wedding party. The lamps were used as light to see their way in the dark streets because the cry would come when it was dark, midnight, whatever. All the weddings happened at night uh, during this time. So, you know, it was dark. So you had to have a lamp or you wouldn't be able to see. But this also relates to us as light used against the darkness of our world. You got to have, remember that song, keep your lamps trimmed and burned. You don't know, so oh, well, then I just made it up. If, if my wife don't know it, I just made that up. We used to sing a song, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. But it's an analogy of the light that we are supposed to carry. So our light is never supposed to go out. Amen. We're supposed to always have the light to light our way through darkness. You will not navigate through the end times without the light of the glorious gospel the Bible says that only those that have been blinded by Satan can't see the light he said the light of the glorious gospel has to shine on them look at somebody and say you're the light so our light has to continuously shine in this time listen let me say this let me say this don't take it personally don't get offended please you're gonna have to get yourself together you can't be a crying, sniffling, scared, panicking mess at the end times. You are, look at somebody say, you are the light. You're the only light that folks, are, folks ain't going to church no more. Folks watching Zoom. Folks don't have faith in the church no more. They finding money behind toilets in churches. Folk don't know what to believe anymore. So you're going to have to be the walking lantern in the street. The light that people can see so get it look at somebody say get it together get it together it's okay to come to the altar and pray and all that that's what Sundays are for but man you ought to get enough in here to be able to take light out there into the world amen every time a bill comes don't you oh, every time a exemption form and they tell you you gotta find why they didn't push the date all the way to March now just get, forget about that you let a Marion keep on dancing let him keep dancing ain't got nothing to do with you you're supposed to be the light of the <laughs> you're supposed to be the light of the world quit just stop it no don't you be afraid let not your heart be troubled the bible says in this day men's hearts will fail them because of fear of the things that are coming don't you let fear mess with your heart Folks scared and sniffling and just snotting over money and jobs and cars and payments. What? Get it? Look at somebody and say, get it together. You got to be the light. So the ten virgins were bridesmaids in the wedding party. The lamps were used as light to see their way in the dark streets. And this relates to us as light used against the darkness of this world. John 12 and 36. While ye have light. Believe in the light. Look at somebody say, believe in the light. Come on, look at somebody say, believe in the light. While you have light, believe in the light. That ye may be the children of the light. 
These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from you. So you're going to be the children of the light. We're not walking in darkness. But while ye have light, believe in the light. But knowledge is also light. So shed some light on this, brother. Shed some knowledge. Make me smarter. So with light, we have knowledge. Knowledge, because we have the knowledge of how this is going to play out, we don't have to be afraid. That's what light does. Light illuminates darkness. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a what? Light unto my path. Light lightens the way. I don't have to be afraid of the dark when I have light. Lanterns that they used back then also showed who was a part of the wedding party. They all started out with light, which implied that they all initially planned to be a part of the wedding party. Nobody really plans to go to hell. Even little Nas X said he was just playing. He's with a girl now. His nasty self. Yeah, he, he danced with the devil and everything. And then Crunchy Black made a video and said, Brother, you better leave that devil alone. Am I telling the truth? He told him, you leave that. He said, brother, that devil that you just did a video on, that's not the real devil. Let me tell you who the real devil is. You don't want to play with, look at somebody and say, don't play with the devil. Now, we're not afraid of the devil, but don't you go to playing with him. Amen. Why you messing with the devil anyway? Don't you know the devil is real? So ain't no need of us playing with it. Amen. We're supposed to fight the devil. Amen. We're supposed to be fighters of the devil. And I'm not picking a fight with the devil anyway, either. Because what I do for Jesus is going to make him mad anyway. Amen. Just because I'm standing in the end times, the devil is upset. If you're the devil, who you mad at? God. How you take how, how you get back at God? Through who God is using. Who is God using? His people. So the lanterns also showed who was a part of the wedding party. So everybody thought that they were everybody plans. That you may not plan to go to, he, to hell or heaven, but you just believe that if I do what I'm supposed to do, everything's gonna turn out okay. That's the general consensus. Nobody really takes account of what they're doing. Man, if I become a homosexual and I bring that lifestyle in and I can't really change from it, where will I end up? A prudent man, before he makes the decision to lay with another man, will think about his future. A prudent person, before they think about being transgender, can you imagine being transgender? Changing your actual body against, yeah. against nature, biology, science, chemistry, against physics. Yeah. You change against everything. Yeah. You have to take 50 pills a day. You didn't know that, did you? Injections. Yeah. If you're a man, you got to wear diapers. You're always bleeding and pussing. I'm, I'm telling the truth. Y'all don't want to hear this part. Yeah, that's a stank, nasty existence. You know why your body is rejecting it? Because that's not what God created you to be. If I care about you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Why would I sit up here and make you see the transgender on TV? Oh, well, he just wearing a wig and some glasses. And I, you know, no, 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 no. It's way deeper than that. On top of all the stuff they have to take and all the stuff they have to do to their body, then they got to take some kind of drug to, to quiet their consciousness. Because their mind is telling them this is not who you were created to be. 
That's light. I'm shedding light. I just shed some knowledge, didn't I? That's light. That's information so you can make an informed decision about your choice. What you're choosing to be. That's light. You got to be the, look at somebody say, you got to be the light. Man, you got to be the light. But everybody plans on a good outcome. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. So everyone thinks that they're a part of the, the wedding. <laughs> but the lantern showed who wasn't. If you walking in darkness, you're a crasher. Only the people with light knew where they were going. If you walked in, if you walking in darkness without the light, you come to crash the wedding, brother. You won't be able to get in. First John 2. Well, let me finish. A wedding is an intimate occasion only for those what? Invited. You ever showed up to a wedding you weren't invited to? I hope you haven't. No, because you'd be out of place. Like, where did you come from? You just came to eat the meatballs. They always have meatballs. Always. Simmering in the gravy? Always. The little candle under it, keeping it warm? Always. It's not a wedding without meatballs. If you got married and y'all didn't have meatballs, I don't know. I don't know if you officially, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where things stand with the law. I think you have to have the meatballs with the sauce. You know, sometimes it's sweet sauce, marinara. Sometimes it's barbecue sauce. Sometimes it's just good old gravy. I like the gravy. Just give them to me dry and let me put my own sauce on it. I bring a couple of packets. <laughs> I'm hungry, Elder. Sister Anne Marie made me fish this morning. That don't last long when you're lifting weights heavy. I'm hungry again. <laughs> a wedding is an intimate occasion only for those invited. First John 2 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have what? They wouldn't have turned around to go by all. They would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be made known to everybody that they were never really with us. That's going to be a sad day. Folks sat in church. I'm not wasting my time in church. I'm not wasting my time, Eddie. I'm not sitting up in here and going to miss heaven. That's a waste of time. I could be fishing every Sunday. Pot locking in the flats. I could be somewhere cutting the rug, juking and scooting on a Sunday morning, or I could be resting on Sunday from what I did Saturday. I'm not going to sit in church and go to hell. I'm not going to hell from the church seat, from the microphone, preaching the gospel. I want to wave at you when you're coming in. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I came before you. But there are many that started out with us, but they aren't of us. And this is illustrated by those that did not have the light. All ten initially had light from their lanterns. However, the separation comes. And the reason why we call five of them wise and five foolish because five of them were prudent and considered the delay of the wedding and prepared to make it through by bringing a what? Extra amount of oil for their lamps. That's prudence. I'm thinking of the future. The bridegroom, let's see. Typically, we don't know when the bridegroom is going to be ready. We don't know when the call is, is going to come. So let me prepare just in case there's a long period and he delays. Proverbs 14 and 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand what? His way. That means what I'm doing now. How does it affect 
my future. I should prepare now just in case the bridegroom tarry. And even if he doesn't tarry, I'm prepared just in case he tarries. Since it's not my decision, since I can't tell you when I'm going into judgment, and that decision rests on someone else, on someone else let me continually please that person that that decision rests upon. It's not my decision. Your life is not your decision. So let me be prepared and bring some extra oil just in case the bridegroom tarries. In those days, no one knew the hour that the wedding party would march to the location of the wedding. They had to wait for the signal from the father of the groom to start the processional. They had to trim their lanterns so they would be visibly shown to be a part of the wedding party. So the Bible tells us that the ones, all of them had light, but because of the delay when it was time to trim the lamp, five foolish ones was like, uh-oh, our lights went out. Give us some of your oil. They were like, uh-huh. I want to be in the party. So I can't give you none. I need to make sure I can get in. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got to make sure I can get in. Yeah. Oh, we can... We, we can use that analogy for just folk. Brother, I, I got to make sure I'm good. Ooh, you like that church? I'm leaving. Uh, holla. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making sure that I know where, I, where I'm supposed to be. Brother, I can't go with you. Why do they always want to take you with them? I ain't going back to that church. You still going to go? Yeah, I'm going to still go. I was here before you got here. I mean, but, you know, we left, so, I mean, man, you better go. Why would I go? Because you went. Don't nobody follow you, no way. Yeah, out of the kingdom, folk come talking foolishness to you. Hey, brother, you, 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 know, you, you know you're a Sagittarius. I ain't no Sagittarius. I don't believe in that stuff. I mean, well, what's wrong with that? Brother, I don't believe in that. But I don't have the Holy Ghost power to save you if that's what you want to believe. I love my family. But I ain't going to stress over your decision to choose darkness over light. Brother, sometimes you just got to shoot the spiritual deuces. Now, the spiritual deuces are different from the natural deuces. The natural deuces just mean I'm done with you. We don't shoot those. The spiritual deuces mean, brother, there's only so far we can go in conversation and then I, I've changed the subject. You see what I'm saying? Because we're not going to agree. And the Bible says two can't walk together unless they agree. Amen. So sometimes, brother, we can't, we can't hang out no more because now you've adopted this old crazy belief system. Brother, I can't get with that. We can't be... We can't play the PlayStation 5 together no more, brother. I, when your name pop up, I know what you stand for, brother. I'm going to have to, we're going to switch games. Uh, we're going to have to switch systems. I, I, I got to, uh, brother, two got to walk together and be in agreement. Amen. And the beautiful thing about that is as soon as you dismiss that person and y'all go your separate ways, God been waiting to give you somebody else. He's been waiting to bring the right person in your life. That's you holding on to riffraff and foolishness. Why would you be friends with somebody talking against your own decisions and where you trying to go and who you trying to be and who God has said you should be? Why you want to be with that are you crazy? I mean, but I need friends. What are you? You crazy only. That ain't your friend. <laughs> but they had to trim their lantern so they would be visibly shown. To be a part of the wedding party. It's time for the wedding party. So all those that are ready. Light your lanterns and let's roll. Yeah. Wasn't no time to be a uh, brother. You got a little oh, you know. <laughs> you know. 
No, 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 bro. I'm not giving you none of mine. I need mine to make it all the way there. I got just enough for me. Amen. Yeah, while you was out there having fun, I was in there reading the Bible. On Sunday morning, while you was out there fishing, I was in church giving God praise and glory and honor for all he's done for me. While you was out there hating on other folks, I was in my bedroom forgiving on my knees, letting stuff go, making stuff right, calling out names in prayer, telling folks, hey man, I don't hate you. I love you. I'm not going to walk around like that. So don't come try to get what I have, brother. This took work. This wasn't overnight. And when I told you, when I warned you, when I tried to preach the truth to you, you neglected it. You denied it. You had your own way of doing it. You disagreed. Now that the bridegroom has come, brother, don't come asking for all now. It's too late. The party has started. Matthew 24 and 36. But of that day and hour, no man knoweth. No, not the angels of heaven, but who? The Father. Because only the Father knew when it was time. And the Father would tell the Son, it's time. And the cry would go forth, and it would be time. The foolish virgins did not have enough all for the very event that they claimed they were a part of. They went out to buy more oil, but guess what? It was too late. How many messages have you heard? How many times have you sat in here and God convicted your heart? A message of truth tried to come and penetrate that ugly shell you have outside, and you wouldn't let it in. And when you look up, and Jesus has come, and the door is shut. It's too late. The wedding was already taking place. And they could not be a part of it. Because of the nature of this event. It could not be replicated or repeated. It's a wedding. Can't do this again. You marry somebody else. Whatever, but this, this particular wedding can only happen once. I remember one time, boy, you know, I had these musicians back. That's why I thank God for these ABC musicians. I had these musicians one time, and I had this business where I would write songs for your wedding and customize your vows, turn them into songs and all this stuff. And, man, I was making a killing doing that. And I was, had my musicians and all that, and I had this one musician. He was so good, I figured I'd just put up with him, but he was trifling. You know how the musicians are. He had what I call musicianitis. <laughs> Undependable. So we sitting at this wedding. I done wrote all these songs. Got, I mean, we done customized this whole wedding, everything. And he's not there. And so the wedding was delayed a little bit, but then they had to go ahead and start. And then he walked in laughing. Oh, man. I'm sorry. And I looked. I said, brother, do you understand? That this is a one time thing. You have ruined this wedding forever. You mess this wedding up forever. Ah oh, man. No you think they're going to be okay. Brother. We can't do this again. And he did, I couldn't make him understand. That this was a one shot thing. Just like this generation now. You can't make them understand. Brother. You're going to have to pay for those actions. And you get one time to miss Christ. And when he's come and he's gone, you won't be with him. A consummation can only happen once. The wedding was a one-time event. And if you missed it, it is missed. John 10 and 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall what? Be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Oh, but if he doesn't come in through the door, he cannot 
enter in. The five wise are called wise because they prepared for the delayed coming. We as believers all know that Jesus' return has been what? Delayed according to our earth time. Right? Because our grandmothers told us he could come back at any time. And their grandmothers told them he could come back at any time. And in the Bible days, he said, watch, because you don't know I could come back at any time. So in earth years, don't let me go to the 3D, 4D stuff again. I don't have time for that. But in our earth years, in earth time, it looks as if it's been delayed. But in God's time, it ain't been but a couple of days. <laughs> the date to the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand years, one day. It's been 2,000 years, two days. Ooh, but on that third day, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. So, we are waiting for his return. So, we must be prepared because we do not know the day or the hour when he will what? Return. Luke 19 and 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, do what? Look at somebody and say, occupy. That's what you're doing. You're doing that now. You're occupying. You're just occupying. Like we're occupying. We're, we're just busy just being humans. And that's okay. In this Bible, the, in this parable, the Bible says they all slept. Because of the last hour they were in. All ten of them slept and got rest while they waited. This signifies that as we wait, we are to be what? Human. Human. And function as what? Patient watchers that are prepared for his coming. Ain't nothing wrong with functioning as a human. God created us to be human. He finds pleasure in you, man, taking care of your woman. That's creation role, and that pleases him. He finds pleasure in you, woman, taking care of your man. And if you don't have a man, he finds pleasure in you, finding pleasure in him. If you don't have a woman, he finds pleasure in you, finding pleasure in him. Amen. So, God finds pleasure in us functioning as human beings. So, it's okay to sleep. I hate when they, oh, no, no, they exegete. Oh, see, if they had been sleep, see, if they all had been, brother, sleep don't have nothing. They would sleep because it was late. Can it be late? Can it just be late? Y'all know what I'm talking about. They breaking all that. It's late, man. They would sleep. It's okay to be asleep. It's okay to function as a human while we're waiting on Jesus to come. It's okay to work a job and have your job and you want to keep your job. You do your religious exemption, whatever they say. They fire you off that job. Then you find another job. Whatever. You're taking care of your family. That's good. You can take care of them and live in a big old house. That's great. You can take care of them. You can't live in a big old house. That's great. Wherever you live, take care of them. Amen. It's okay, single ladies. Have your job. Have your career. Whatever you do. Amen. And when that mystical, magical, magnificent day comes and that bridegroom calls for you, just make sure you got your light. Amen. Don't be sneaking and creeping in the darkness where there's no light. Boy, I'm preaching in here today. I feel it. Yeah. But it's okay to be human. It's okay for us to have human cares and concerns. Things hurt us. Things bother us. We just get it right. We have the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. So we get it right. We fix it. We apologize. We repent. Whoa, we just make sure we're good. Because we don't know the day or the hour. All ten of them slept and got rest while they waited. This signifies that as we wait, we ought to be human and function as patient watchers. That are prepared for his coming. First Peter 4 and 7. But therefore. I mean but the end of all things. Is what? At hand. Be ye therefore what? Sober. 
and watch unto prayer. You know, you can be asleep and still watching. As a matter of fact, you need to make sure you're watching while you're asleep. That don't mean sleep with a 12 gauge on your chest. That's not watching. <laughs> Go shoot yourself. No, <laughs> you watch. You why you pray and say, God, while I sleep, protect me from witchcraft and demons and devils that will try to come and take advantage of me in a vulnerable state. I rebuke all paralysis and demons holding me down and all those evil spirits that come in the night. Night husbands, night wives, paying conjugal visits in the spirit. I need all that to see so I can sleep. Amen. And pray and say, God, if a bad dream starts happening, I wake me up so I can rebuke it. And he will. The wrong person is in my dream. Wake me up. Can I preach in here? No. Oh, Y'all remember the story. Who remembers this story? Man, that's one cartoon. I felt so sorry for that grasshopper. The Looney Tunes one. Remember? He was outside just. <laughs> and all the ants were working. They were working hard. He was outside just. And then it got cold. Remember that? And the winter came. And the ants was inside and he was out there. <laughs> the ants wasn't playing. It's cold out here. <laughs> He was shaking. He tried to dance a little. Oh, no. Well, he... And then he looked in the window and they was all in there just. Remember that? They had the fire going. They had food. They just eating. You, you, you know you eating good when you. <laughs> I don't know what it is in there, but. <laughs> that handful of nuts. You know what I'm talking about. Just... Skittles, that is. Uh huh, yeah. They was in there just eating like that. And he was looking in the window and he was shivering. And it should have went off. They invited him in. That's not how this story went in the Bible. Yeah, he playing his fiddle. You know, fiddle means happy. <laughs> Back in the slave times. I don't know. Is there a difference between a fiddle? Where's where's come on? Is there a difference between a fiddle and a violin? Come on. Is there? Or is that just a slave versus a, an orchestra member? <laughs> I don't call mine a fiddle. I don't fiddle around with mine. I actually <laughs> That's the most racist thing ever said at ABC. Yes, yes. <laughs> The fiddler. <laughs> he was at Roots, wasn't he? The fiddler. <laughs> fiddler. He was, was he free? He was free to fiddle. Okay, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but this Anne and the Grasshopper story, it's powerful. There's a powerful meaning behind it. It's the, almost the same story as these ten virgins. It's okay to enjoy life and rest when you are what? Confident that you are prepared for Christ's return. Yes. It's okay to rest if you're prepared. That's what I preached last week. You shouldn't have anxiety. You shouldn't have depression. You shouldn't have insomnia. You should be able to sleep when you know you're prepared for Christ's return. No matter what the world decides to do. No matter what they decide to do to me. If I'm prepared, I can rest. The five virgins were foolish because they were resting like the wise ones. Did y'all hear that? They were napping and chilling like they had all. Man, when you acting like you have all and you really don't have none, the Bible says you deceive yourself. Brother. Yeah, they were right there. All of them sleep. Probably snoring louder than the wise ones. 
<laughs> and then woke up and wasn't ready. The five virgins were foolish because they were resting like the wise ones without having what the bridegroom required of them to enter into the wedding. You sleeping like you ready to go and you're not. Matthew 11 and 25 and 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and what? Lowly in heart. Listen to this. And ye shall find what? In Christ ye shall find what? Rest unto you. Y'all, this is our resting time. Oh, I got one hand clap. Now, that don't mean you're not preaching the gospel. That don't mean you're not trying to help people. But, man, what you doing on the internet looking at everything that's happening? And hold, oh, oh, oh. No! If you're prepared. You should be chilling. Prepared. Oh, you can't get hand claps on that. Yeah, you ain't worried about no vax. You're not worried about Amaracron and all of that stuff, whatever it's called. You're not worried about any of that. You're resting. I'm resting in Jesus because he told me to take his yoke upon me. I don't have the world's yoke. I don't have the world's problems. I don't have the world's fear. I don't have the world's issues. I don't have the world's discomfort, discontentment. I'm not worried like the world. I have rest. So I can sleep while my lantern. I can sleep next to my lantern. Because when it's time to go and get up, I know I have the oil to light it. Amen. Summary. Man, this was good, wasn't it? I'm glad I went ahead and preached it. Oh, it's a long summary. Three slides long. Some may feel that this parable is too harsh. You know, nowadays, they don't even like preaching this kind of stuff. You know, the Joel Osteens and folk like him. I tried to Google a picture of him frowning the other day. And I couldn't find one. There's not one. I said, something is wrong with this. Something is wrong. Bruh, I need you upset at some point. Some, there at some point. There's, no, there, there's not a picture. Because they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, show that. You know, y'all know our society is just, you know. Sports just trash. Can't hit the quarterback. Oh, you can't hit the quarterback. Remember when you used to could just, I mean... That's why you can't even compare these new quarterbacks to the old quarterbacks. Roger Starback hand look like this. He have to pop it into place every time he reach up for something. Y'all think I'm playing? I'm serious. He has two fingers turned all the way. I mean, that's the, the, he used to, have to take hits. Them dudes used to come at him, and you have to throw under that kind of duress. That's a real quarterback. Hey, Amen. You can't compare these NBA players. Y'all can keep trying to do it all you want to. This ain't the same game. This ain't the same game. Gary Payton, I think he had a, a, a boxing glove on when he was playing. Where you going, Jay? Get back in here. Don't try to merge with the darkness. I saw you, boy. <laughs> You can't, you can't compare it. You can talk it, you can't. Them dudes were brutal. It was blood on the court every game. Even in the late 90s and early 2000s. Think Dirk Nowitzki, he don't even have any real teeth in his head. Yeah, so it was just a different time, man. Now everything is so soft. They got female refs on the NFL field. What was she doing out there? Uh-uh, uh-uh, you hit him too hard. What? You know, I got to say it because they can't say it on the news. They get canceled. I'm already canceled. I've been canceled. Uh-uh. That's too rough. That's too rough. <laughs> Get off that field. If you can't tackle a man, you don't need to be out there. You might get hit and broke all up. 
And then they're going to cancel whoever hit him. Ooh, he hit her. He flew into her. But that's just, they just punking everything up. Putting panties on everything. Can't have a commentate, can't talk about sports without equal women and men talking. Oh, I don't care if y'all clap. I don't care. I ain't sitting around discussing sports with my wife. Because I know she don't care. I call somebody. He ain't calling Jeff. He's ignorant. I'm going to call somebody that's going to talk with some. I'm all on Jeff today. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. You deserve it. Y'all didn't see him. Y'all did not see how he acted about these Georgia Bulldogs. But anyway, but what's happening to the world, everything is just turning pink. It's okay for men to wear pink. No, it's not. Now, you might can wear salmon. <laughs> but that light, soft pink. Bro, we won't even sell you one of them shirts in the visitor center. Nah, man, nah, you can't have this. Yeah! What does this have to do with the ten virgins, Elder? Tom felt this parable is too harsh because it illustrates people that were a part of the kingdom of God, but in the last minute they ran out of anointing and ended up being shut out of the kingdom forever. Y'all heard that? That's not what happened. You ain't run out of anointing. Oh, they was anointed, but then the anointed went out. Jesus came and they got left. That, no, that is, no. This is not what this parable is relaying. Now listen to this, y'all. We must be careful not to take our anger, disdain for others, and our other emotional issues and tie them into scripture so we can attack or condemn others that may err in their faith. So stop measuring folks' spirituality and judging and condemning folks. You're not, look at somebody and say, you're not God. The Bible said that some of the prostitutes and politicians going to make it in before some of these religious folks. The judges. Jesus is not warning his disciples that they could possibly miss his return if they lose their fire or anointing. All right? No. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the Holy Ghost. How do you lose it if it's in the Holy Ghost? So even in our weakness, he is what? And I need him to be strong because I'm not strong all the time. Anybody not strong all the time? I need him to be strong. So we're not talking about you losing the fire and missing Jesus. What is the fire? Folk think speaking in tongues and talking loud and all of that is the fire. That's not the fire. Did you go and repent to that person? Did you go get forgiveness? Have you forgiven that person? That's fire. Uh-oh, see. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have a fire and you hate somebody. Can I keep preaching in here? The anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the Holy Ghost. But there are definitely, now don't make no mistake, there are definitely those that may have started in Christ with good intentions, but chose their own way and in the end, no longer believing. Yeah. Now there is definitely those. A lot of them. Now they believe some weird stuff. Only black people going to be saved. That's weird. Amen. Yeah. Or they believe in burning sage and you know, they merge and manifest with all this old, you know, no, nah, brother, now you own some other stuff that's going to get you straight to hell because those aren't the beliefs of our Savior. The de Amen. The delay of Christ's return can definitely expose the hearts of people and show their true intentions. If you didn't bring enough oil to last, did you really believe light was necessary? This is not a story about people that thought they were ready and they weren't. 
this is not about people that found out in the last hour that they had believed the lie and weren't saved. That's not what this parable is about. This parable is about having a love for the bridegroom and honoring his invitation and instructions. <laughs> it's about being so excited about the event that you, look at somebody and say, make sure. You make sure you are prepared for it. Jesus is not coming back for anybody that doesn't love him. Are you kidding? If you care, you will what? If you care, you will prepare. If your heart is not in it, you will not follow the instructions given. This parable is explaining the rejection of those who despite appearances, they look like they were at the party, never made preparation for the coming of the kingdom. They never truly followed God or the teachings of Christ. They married, ate, slept, and enjoyed their own way of doing things until their end came. These are those that mocked the truth, persecuted those that stood for truth, and killed those that taught the truth. Because the truth made their lives a lie. They fought against the truth and accepted lies in its place. They had an invitation to the party and were given explicit instructions to ob obtain entry. You must have what? Light. When it was time for the march to the bridegroom's house, they were not marching with them. They went out to do what they felt they needed to do to get light. By the time they got to the party, the door was shut. And it was too late. Just as the days of Noah, so it will be when Jesus comes back for us. Many will beg the Lord to open the door and he will say, depart from me. You were never mine. Luke 13 and 23 tells us, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, don't worry about how many people are going to be saved. He said, you strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in. And what? Shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door. And ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. Yeah. You sat in church. You heard the sermons. Lord. We were right there. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Everyone stand to your feet. Preparation time. That's all this message was about. This parable. I want to be ready. If that's you, you want to make sure you're ready, just come up. We're going to believe. Hey, I want to make sure. Nothing's in my heart. Nothing's in my way. Nothing. I want to be ready. Just come up. God has brought you to a ministry that actively preaches the word. Preaches the light so that the light can illuminate your way. Show you which way to go. Show you the things you need to take care of. Show you the things you need to do. Show you all of that. You're seeing it every week. You're hearing it every week in here. We make sure that the word goes forth in here with truth. And it's powerful truth. It's in the word. So, Lord, I don't want nothing in my way. I want all for my lamp. 
And I want to make sure when you return, you come back for me. The conviction of the Holy Ghost is really special. You know what it means? It means that you're not callous toward him. He said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Man, soft, if you keep your heart tender for him, he can speak to you. Today is not the day to harden your heart. So, Lord, I need everything right. Everything right. Just bow your heads all over. Father God, we come before you right now, Lord, asking you to forgive us of all sin. Asking you, Lord, anything we're into that we shouldn't be. Anything we've gotten into, anything we're doing, Father God, you know us. And we don't want to be unprepared. So prepare us, God, spiritually. Cleanse our hearts. Anything that's in your way, Father God, we want it removed. Mentally, spiritually, physically. Father God, cleanse us, Lord, of all unrighteousness. You said you were faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we repent to you. So God, forgive us, whatever it is, whoever it is, whatever we've done, whatever we've said, whatever we've seen, whatever we've been watching, whatever we've been listening to, whoever we've been talking to, whoever's been changing our minds about you, whoever's been entering into our hearts to make us do things that we shouldn't. Father God, whoever's leading us astray, whatever it is, remove it right now, God, because we want to be ready when you return. Father God, we won't get many more end time messages before the end comes. So we want to be ready when you come. We want to be ready when you come. So forgive us, God, of all of our sins. Creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us so that we will be pleasing to you in Jesus name name come on lift your hands up and father god we are your people in this hour so we lift our hands up with our hands open as a symbol of releasing all stress all worry all fear anxiety all depression anything father god insomnia all anything god heart conditions any physical condition physical ailments father god we're not going to carry what the world carries because we're not in the condition that the world is in but god we are free and we will rest in you we will take your yoke upon us so that we can rest, so we can have peace at night. So, Father God, when we lay our heads down, we can think of you. When we wake up in the morning, we can give you praise and glory. Clean us up, Lord. Fix us, God. Lift the heavy weight. Father God, we will not carry it, but we release it right now in the name that is above every name. We release it, God. So we will be ready when you return. We release it right now. Come on, just release it. Just speak it right now. I let it go. All anxiety, all fear, all doubt, all disbelief right now. Worrying about my job, worrying about money, worrying about the exemption, worrying about this or that. I release it. I won't carry the weight of the world when I'm not in the world. I'm not of the world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. So I will not carry their weight. But right now I claim freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in my home. Freedom in my body, freedom in my mind, freedom in my family, freedom in the name of Jesus. And I let go all stress and every heavy thing. I refuse to carry it in the name that is above every name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm ready to see Jesus. And I'm going to be ready when he returns. I'm going to be ready when he returns. Hallelujah. I'm going to be ready when he returns. I will be ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. I will be ready. Give me the all I need. Give me the light I need. Give me all that I need, Lord. 
so I can be ready when you return. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you can give God some more praise. Make me ready. I want to be ready. I don't want to miss you, Lord. I don't want to miss you. I don't want to be left here. I don't want to suffer with the world. But I want to reign with Christ forever and forever. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. Man, I want to see Jesus. There's nothing worth me missing Jesus. Come on, look at somebody and say, I want to see him face to face. Come on, look at somebody and say, I want to see him face to face. I want to be with him forever and forever. And then after that, forever more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.